terrific. That's that's just terrific. Okay, so here's the game. Hi, I'm Chaos Blue, and with me hey, is hi. generic gamer. And we're the best that the me that the medium bull could afford. <laughs> but hey, you got us. And I have a nice spinning rebel logo. Not not like the really fancy one. I have the old one. But you know, again, you get what you pay for. Okay, so the game is starting in five-ish minutes now. So we're gonna take a quick look at the teams. Uh, first, we have Staticus here. Luck with the orcs. Uh, yeah, pretty basic lineman orc team. From, from my personal experience. If I remember correctly, this is one of the newer teams as opposed to like a returning team. So that kind of explains mm -hmm. why there's not a whole bunch of skills floating around mm -hmm. here. Yeah, um, I feel like it has a lot of stat ups for a, for a medium sized team though. Uh, yeah, the it's usually the orc teams in particular that uh, <laughs> that tend to get the big stat ups and upgrades, that kind of thing. Hmm. Funny how that works. I suppose it's a team that can use them all, though. Well, I mean, except for armor, but you know, like, no one takes armor. You know, um... I can see a lot of claw in this, so. Uh, or in Lineman League in general, so that, that's at least a plus for armor. Okay, well, I mean, that's fair. Uh, in terms of composition, we have four... We have half the team has block. We have the plus strength player, of course. There's a single mighty blow player for trying to get some removals. I expect to see blitzes from there. We also have two different ball sackers. One of them has tackle. The other one has strip ball. Both of them have wrestle, so it is... A team well built for handling different eventualities in ball carriers, as long as they're not all eventualities not on the same ball carrier. Um, and of course, there's a dirty player because what lineman team would be complete without a dirty player? Maybe a goblin lineman team. <laughs> they can't take that. that no, big? if you're playing if you're playing players. goblins, you t make room. For a dirty player. That's what doubles are for. Um, no, you take sneak and get the best kill in the entire game. I would not advise that even on a goblin team. Um, the, enhan the stadium is unenhanced, and I believe it is Staticus' home game, so there will be no stadium. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to ask, because mm -hmm. when, when we get to the kiss, uh, they're going to have one as like a little spoiler. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also no sure hands, which against Kislev might be a might be a problem, um, or it might not be. I I don't know. <laughs> it, it it could it has the potential for being a problem, though. Um, so I expect ball carrier will probably be one of the probably the block plus movement lineman if I had to guess actually. That seems the most natural ball carrier here. I personally put it on the strength guy. M makes him, you know, get punched a lot less, you know? Oh, and uh, Cheese X has told us that uh, it was actually a tie for first place in Stetica's division. He uh, won, literally won the coin toss. So he has luck on his oh, side. Yeah. It was one of those weird situations where he also had the same touchdown mm -hmm. difference, if I remember correctly. They were perfectly tied. Okay, uh, let's look at the other team now. That would be the Mental Anguish, coached by uh, Slice and Dice. Hello, Darkness, my old friend. We are sent. Kislev, dressed up as Santa Claus. There are 12 players on this team as well. Uh, this looks like a more developed team. It has... Oof. Oof. That's a lot. Yeah. 
Uh, going down the list, we have a Build Your Own Blitzer with Mighty Blow, Tackle, Block, and Plus Strength. That, I hate myself, is going to hurt a whole lot of players. Well, maybe not against Orcs, but it's, he's going to try. Uh, we have You Are Insane, which is a Agi 4 uh, Kislev with Strip Ball and Guard. And then there's another Agi 4 Kislev. This one with Wrestle. So, you know, again, Kislev also has their uh, bases covered. And I think, yes, looking at this team, I feel safe to say the lack of sure hands will be punished. Um, <laughs> beyond that, we have two more Wrestle players. We have another guard player. And, hey, sure hands. Not on one of the Agi players. But, you know, I think this team can probably get away with that. I mean, that's actually a good call, because you don't want a wrestle player holding the ball. <laughs> there is that, too. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, the stadium we will not be getting was a magician shop. I can't, That's kind of a shame. I think a magician shop would have added some extra flair to this medium bowl. But what you gonna do? Um, otherwise, like, this is a pretty good looking team. Uh, I don't care to make a prediction who is gonna come out on top in this medium bowl final but i know who i would put my money on <laughs> i'm not going to make any definitive statements either but to kind of tip the scales a little bit the kislev had to go through an insane dwarf team obviously stacked to the brim with all sorts of guard as dwarves would Mm -hmm. and a stat freak orc team so they they had to put up big fights with teams i personally lost against this season. so they have experience is what you're saying yeah uh looks like the team the game is not quite live yet uh should be any time now in fact Let's check. Maybe maybe they've talked about this. And they have... Wait. Nope, they have not. Um, well, it should be live any time now. Uh, what... What are your thoughts on this matchup overall while we're waiting? It's definitely skewed towards the Kislev side as far as raw skills go, but... I... I feel like the Orcs kind of have the advantage by being sturdier and less likely to be removed off the pitch. Um, I will say I think Sadikus is a good coach and th that they've demonstrated that they can play from a disadvantage, I think, by getting here with their team as is. Because, like, their team looks okay, but it is clearly a first-season team and, as I understand, Lyme and Lee, <laughs> very poorly, but he would have had to play against season two teams on his way to get here. I'm I'm not sure how the uh, medium bowl bracket went, but I think it was newer teams versus new, and the returning versus like returning. That way, it wouldn't get like all one sided. I guess I, that, oh. that's at least what I was getting from. Are are you telling me that I'm completely wrong? Like, surely he, surely he had like is the division are the divisions split between new and old players as well? I don't know. Educate yes. educate me on the medium bowl. Okay, so what I'm hearing is it's possible that Stutikus has not played against a single returning coach. I I didn't do a lot of research into that, so oh. I could be completely wrong in well, this regard. Looks like the match is live. Let's go in. Once again, you get what you pay for, folks. <laughs> now, I did notice that the orcs get 150 in inducements, so they they probably struck for a wizard that way. That seems likely. Um, I didn't think to check how much they had in their bank. Uh, I, instead of this position, I would be looking to scum every dollar of my bank money. I do see a wizard here. Uh, and a bribe. So there we go. Uh, scum to bribe. 
Slice and dice. Flat two hundred in the bank, I believe. Uh, slice and dice has two hundred. That's a little on the high side, actually. Slice and dice has the fame plus one. Uh, looks like they chose to defend first. Or no, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, the the orcs are receiving. Yes, that thing I just said was correct. Kids love getting a reroll. Okay. You don't, you don't really hate that, you know. Makes the leaps a lot more cheeky. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. Let's actually turn on skills. Cause that's something that is useful information to have. Uh kids have also left off their sure hands player for their defensive drive. Uh which makes sense to me. Yeah, you don't want him getting battered mm. like before he can do his job. Yeah, they're gonna want to protect that player, and they have a nice rule of five going on on the kiss up side. Orcs, of course, are gonna just immediately try and kill some kiss up. This is a bad idea, living up to his name by realizing he just went up against a mighty blow god. Ah, you'll just need to give me a, a, 10 seconds to catch up. <laughs> oh. I went to the start of the match. Oh, I thought I started late. <laughs> My bad. No, it's fine. We're almost there. Uh... Okay. I should be caught up now. This is the game. We The orcs have formed a cage around the ball. They're going to pick up with their plus strength player, which against this Kislev team, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, I said earlier that a plus movement to, uh, orc was the natural carrier, but when a two plus blitz on the ball is a possibility, um, yeah, you're going to want plus strength to make that look a little less appealing. Yeah. Oh, and we have a foul incoming. With the bribe, I could like this. It's not an optimal foul because, like, well, the the orc is worth more than the lineman, but it's well, as I said, with the bribe, I think it works. Plus, with Kislev, they could still get up, leap out of there, harass you somehow. Stare at you meanly. That kind of thing. Mm hmm. <laughs> that is a very good point, Kanuki. Okay, so it is looking like the Kislev are going to try and make a. Yeah, just like so, a blitz on this line of orcs. Oh, and that is a KO. And that's the receipt for the foul. Uh, Staticus ha- I'm almost surprised Staticus didn't take a babe as well. It sounds like he could have afforded it. He could have, but I don't blame him opting out of it. It is the thing, because like- It, it's armor nine. You, you don't expect it to break, you know. Um, I definitely expect armor nine to break, but perhaps I, that it, perhaps that's just experience oh. on my part. Uh, okay. So, Staticus has the ball and has it relatively protected, but I don't know how they're going to go down this pitch. The Kislev have a pretty good defense going on on their side. I think probably we will see Staticus square up against that defense, maybe go slightly to one side, possibly try and bait out uh, overcommitment to one side, then go to the, swap to the other. 
But that's always tricky to do, especially playing a team like Orcs. Uh, the Kislev are faster, so any bait is going to be tricky. And as long as you're not hugging in blind, I feel like that you're going to be fine, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, that this is looks like the setup for a blitz here, probably with the mighty blow dwarf, or dwarf, sorry, Aww. orc. <laughs> I don't think we'll see a hit on the line of Kislev that has well two orcs based on it now. Although, it's not impossible. Yeah, okay. There's going to be a cage forming on the right side here. Most likely the Blitz will be on the line man in the top. And then there will be enough assists to generate a regular block on the other Kislev that is facing this cage. Oh, no, I was mistaken. Just going straight for that player. That is probably the safer play, so that makes some sense. Uh, the problem here is that Sedicus has left a window in the back of their cage. Against any other team, this would be fine, but that could be exploited by Kislev. I think he's going to go for a punch on the guard guy here. Uh, that I can't... I cannot blame him for that. Uh, that's definitely a very tempting block. Now the question is where you put the strip ball guy. I'd probably put him, like, in front of the movement guy and behind the strength up just to mm. sort of complete that back end a bit. It's kind of hard to say. You could put him by the cage, which appears, um, but the problem with that is it's giving up the left side of the pitch uh, completely. As it is, I think this positioning is fine because it forces Kislev to leap early. So they won't be able to reach the ball easily. Um, however, it does still give up the left side of the pitch. The Kislev are going to have a relatively easy time um, pinching around this orc team. And the question then will be whether they can stay pinched and keep putting on the pressure or whether the orcs will bust through. The Kislev, of course, do have a player advantage, which uh, helps them with that building that pressure. And uh, the Blitz on the plus strength player makes a lot of sense in that context. Not the plus strength player. The blitz with the plus strength player on the Mighty Blow player, because that's the player the Orcs will need to even out the their field position and break through. Yeah, he's one of the higher priority targets at the moment. You're not going to worry too much about, like, one of the wrestle guys or... Well... Oh, there's another KO! You're not going to worry about a block guy, clearly. Uh, but yeah, you're not going to worry about one of the wrestlers, especially the wrestle tackle, because mm -hmm. he doesn't have dodge, and you're not holding the ball either. Mm-hmm. It might be something to think about for your offensive drive, but if you can remove enough orcs or the right orcs, then it won't e even matter. Okay, so what we see here, uh, the orcs have no guard, which leaves them limited options. Um, the Kislev have pressed on the side, as I suspected. The orcs are kind of 
crunched in a bit. Uh, they could attempt to go to the other side of the pitch. They would lose some distance if they did so. Uh, it would help break the the screen that is surrounding them, but it would give a slice and dice chance to make a maybe slightly weaker one further down the pitch, uh, which the orcs certainly do not want to happen. Another alternative is to attempt to bust through. It is relatively easy to make a sideline cage here, but I think against Kislev that would be a mistake. Um, the orcs could also uh, attempt to just cage back up here, let the Kislev continue to put on pressure, and hopefully make a mistake. I think he might be wrapping around since... He's kind of dismantling the movement half the cage, at least. Uh, that is what this is looking like, yes. <sighs> Only stuns for the orc so far, it seems. Hmm. I don't love this positioning. Oh, thanks for the raid. I see you've all come here to enjoy the medium bowl. No refunds. <laughs> no refunds casted by the best service that was affordable. <laughs> In a true medium fashion. Um, I don't love this cage. It's going to be pretty easy for the Kislev to... Break open a hole in it. Well, that dodge is fine. That's the natural way yeah. to... That is the natural way to end the turn. Um, but the problem is... There are... This cage is heavily based. So it's going to be pretty easy to open up a hole in it. Uh, get an assist and then turn that into a possibly a two die. I'm not sure there's quite enough movement for that. Certainly a one die with strip ball. I personally can see both uh, both of the guard players sneaking inside the cage if you blitz the block tackle piece with the strength four, but hmm. I'm not sure if that would be the most optimal thing, you know? Mm -hmm. The problem with that is that the guard players are marked, and it's much better- well, one of them was anyway- and it is much better to make this a blitz on the ball carrier than it is a blitz to, uh, to access the ball carrier. Like so! Okay! That, that, that's an easier way to free up one of the guard guys, I won't lie. Or, never mind, he's the only guard guy right now. Now, the, the question... This can be turned into a 2-die pretty easily, as long as the Kislev is willing to make it some GFIs. And I think they are in this scenario. Oh, that's another KO. Mighty Blow is doing work for the Kislev. And... Okay, that makes sense. The Kislev are going to want to get a second mark on that ball so that the Orcs can't easily pick it up. Like that! Okay! We have the ball loose. We have two players on it. Um, there is chain push potential to remove both of the players on that ball, uh, and then pick it up, but the problem with that scenario is that it will be hard for the orcs to protect the ball after they have retrieved it. 
Yeah, cause how many players would you have to dedicate to the change put chain pushes thing? Three. And with like seven players, one of which is tucked behind a nice Kislev okay. screen well, right now. It looks like the Sudoku's are not going for it anyway. Probably going to try and scatter the ball. Yep. There's another stun. And scattered the ball into a better position. I think that's probably enough to protect the ball now. But it's going to be a little bit iffy still. We're going to see the ball go to the right here. And the cage is going to be based on at least one side. But probably where it's going to be based is not going to be an easy block. Nor is it going to be a great follow-up afterwards. Of course, this is a one, a strength three player. So we might just see a Kislev jump into the cave, cage. Oh yeah, I, I wouldn't hate to see the guard guy just like get up and personal with all these orcs. Then maybe run in with one of the unskilled linemen just to punch the movement guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be very tempting for Stauticus to make some one die blocks here as well. Um... Okay, well, that's an interesting uh, position. You know, I don't hate that. It makes it a little it makes the jump play a little bit harder. That's an interesting one. I would not have used Russell there, but it looks like Slice and Dice did. They both had Russell. <laughs> the turn was ending regardless, and seeing yep. how, like... With, with the Kislev, at least, seeing how many orcs were already moved, I, I wouldn't have done it just to test my luck, personally. Well, it is an ad it is the Agi 4 Kislev, though, right? You don't want to risk it. And it being on the yeah. ground does actually still help the orcs. Oh! We have an injury. Block or badly hurt. Um, I don't think Staticus can afford. This is not a serious injury, but I don't think Staticus can afford to lose more players. Uh, did not use the app though. I guess he's relying on the wake up rolls. This thing. Well, uh, if he let's see. Let's say he scores. He should get two out of three of those players back. Then he will only be one player down. That's not ideal, but I think that's probably workable for orcs. As long as- I personally- Oh. Oh no, go ahead. I personally don't hate relying on the KOs since if he does score, he's getting two mm -hmm. sets of rolls is the thing. Uh, let's put it this way. I would like it a lot better if he had a babe. Yeah, I'm kind of eating my own words right now, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, um... There's not... The sideline cage looks really bad here. You would need a one die block to open it up, and you'd probably be doing that block with a... Yeah, that makes sense. Um, Where was that guy going? I'm not sure. I think mostly he was just trying to get unmarked. I would have almost preferred to see him jump the other way. He could have come around and marked the ball carrier. Uh, he probably would have gotten surf, but you know, the ball carrier would not have been moving. <laughs> Actually, did, did he move the guy standing next to the movement player? Uh, he moved the... Did he? I'm not sure. No, he... I just rewound it, he did. 
Okay then. Look, I think that's a good place for that kiss lip to be regardless. Um, so the temptation here is going to be to attempt to punch through the kiss of line, but I don't think that's a very good play. It is a one die with a player without block to even open it up, and then you're sideline caging uh, against right. Kislev, which is which is not great. And depending on the scatter, that's just going to be worse for the orcs, straight up. Hmm. They could try and blitz the just why game and then form up in here, but that will not be a secure cage. They won't be able to cage there properly without basing some of their players. Um, that's probably the best option for getting forward momentum, though. Which I feel like they... Which the orcs are going to feel like they need, because they kind of do at this point. That's another stun. Okay, so the replay is being a bit uncooperative with me because it won't let me uh, go oh. forward, I guess. Okay, I see what's going to happen here. This is a risky play. Um, not the least because that player is still within blitzing range of oh. at least three Kislev? That, yeah, at least three Kislev players. But uh, we're gonna see the pass to, the to, we're gonna see the pass for the potato play here. Now you're happy this isn't the Kislev Stadium. <laughs> or, or, if you're oh, Stone Oh, made the throw. Uh, gonna reroll that catch. Okay, um... Classic case of Butterfingers foiling a pass again. So, uh, that scatter is really not ideal. Because, uh... There's a stun. Yeah, because I that can happen. And then there's a 2 plus dodge for the Agi 4 player to pick up that ball. I don't know why they're rerolling this. It, Re Russell is actually fine. Yeah, I'm not sure why they rerolled that. It was not, it was an unnecessary reroll. Um, I guess because they didn't really wanted to hurt the player. I mean, it does have Russell strip ball. But, like, this is... This is really easy for the Agi forward lineman to pick up that ball. Then if you're worried about the orcs sacking him, throw it down pitch. The orcs are not going to be able to score from there. My best guess is that, like, in the event that the uh, ball isn't getting carried, then the rest of the orc is just going to hop right back up and someone can just, like, chase after whoever attempted the pickup and punch him right in the jaw. Okay, I don't like this block. It makes more sense now why uh, Slice and Dice didn't want the both down, but I feel like I feel like Slice and Dice could have secured this ball better. Um, still, uh, he's in a pretty commanding position. The Orcs have three turns left to score. Uh, they have one reroll left as well. And, uh, they aren't moving down the pitch this turn. <laughs> so, they're in full potato mode now. Uh, they're gonna be... There's gonna be an easy kiss of two die on the next turn. Unless they try and do something crazy with the ball again. Which, uh... This time we're talking, like, really crazy. Um, the best way to secure this ball right now... And by best, I mean the way to get it most secure. Not 
the best action to take. <laughs> because that is a very important distinction. Uh, yeah. do there is an orc on the far side here. The one standing up would be ideal. Uh, so the block tack a one. Three plus dodge out. Go as far down the pitch as you can. And only three Kislev will be able to reach you then. And then pick up the ball with the rest of the guy. And then throw it to across the pitch to your deeper orc over the heads of Kislev players. The problem at that point would be one five plus or I believe it would be a four plus if the throw is coming towards the Agi four guy is going to put that all in shambles. Oh yeah, no, like that is not, that is why I said that is not the best play. That is the play that will result in the ball being as safe as possible. <laughs> Getting the ball there is very unlikely. <laughs> Off topic, but I personally wouldn't hate pass block on one of these Agi Ford guys either, just to make it even more annoying. It, I mean, in, in the future, obviously. Like, there's the Wrestle Agi Four player. That player would actually not be bad, too bad with pass block. Oh, a red dice ended up working. Okay then. I guess he's picking up with the movement guy. Do looks like it? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, um oh that's Oh Oh that's rough. Um Yeah, I jinxed this team. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there right now. Like I don't hate I actually don't hate this play. Like, that was a risky play, but it was probably a, it was probably a better alternative to getting the ball secure than pick, trying to just pick it up and pray with the wrestle guy. Um, if only because it ha had extra players around the ball, but that, that pickup, that was rough. And like, the orcs I think have spent, spent two of, out of their three rerolls on pickups that didn't work anyway. I can kind of see what he's going for right now. He's probably going to pick up with the Agi 2 and throw to one of the unskilled guys. Probably I will have a stroke. Uh, just yeah. to like, I... maybe bait out the wizard. Okay, well, uh, Kislev cannot pick up the ball either. Uh, you did not miss here. The orcs did attempt to make a pass, and they did actually succeed on the pass part of that pass. It was the catch where they failed. Um, so, uh, Kislev have failed to pick up the ball, so there's still a chance here, however slim, for the orcs to make a play. Yeah. However, um... I, I'm not sure what that play is here. Um, probably it's doing a lot of crazy dodging. Um, and then doing that throw I was talking about earlier. That's the only real out I can see here for the orcs. Uh, the other alternative is they can change, try and change gears to simply not be scored on. That's not great either, but... You know, it's better to go 0-0 zero, zero into the second half than it is to go 0-1. Yeah. And really, if the orcs can keep the Kislev from picking up the ball for one turn, they can probably prevent themselves being scored on without burning the wizard. From that point, um, they will have a chance to steal the ball in the second half with, with their wizard. 
Yeah, as long as the wizard isn't used this half, I feel like that's gonna be a big one for the orcs. Big dodge right there. Yep, um, that definitely helps the, the scenario here. If, if he at least wants to base the ball, then at least go down and then mm. back up. I'm not sure. That, I'm not sure that you risk the second dodge without the reroll. Uh, this is already a much better position than before. Oh it, yeah, because he has zero complete free. Mm -hmm. uh, this position requires moving an extra player to blitz him, which means there's one more player that is not picking up the ball. Um, plus, it's just more in the way for running downfield if the ball is retrieved. Okay, uh, that makes sense. Pick up with the Agi 4 player. Throw down to the receiver. Now I don't hate this because he can take the other... Oh, uh, that's another injury. Uh, that's not... Well, I guess the MNG doesn't really matter. Um, ex unless the Apple is used, the MNG could spoil that. Uh, I don't see I an apple being, being used. I feel like this sh should be... Okay, it was an apple. The player was recovered. Which Good is... Call, honestly. I, I agree. I, I think you need... You cannot afford to lose that player uh, if you want to win the game at this point. Now, I personally don't hate this because if he passes or hands off to someone, there's... Basically, two wizard targets. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure why he went for the three plus throw instead of the two plus throw. Uh, I, I guess it's a little harder to hit that player. Yeah. Okay, it is no longer possible for the orcs to score. I think using the wizard would actually be a mistake because it will be easy for Kislev to retrieve that ball. Uh, it will be a 2 plus pickup, a 3 plus handoff, and then run it in to score. Yeah, you would definitely save the wizard now. Uh, or cannot possibly score either. I think their their best play is to either try and protect their players or try and remove Kislev. At this point, I think you need to go for the risk here, try and remove Kislev play, because um, they need to find some way to get an advantage here. In particular, I think they really need to target... Um, Huh. Players with uh, skills is what I was going to say. I'm not sure what that orc was going for. It was a blitz, but it was a weird dodge angle. Oh, and uh, Kislev are going to surf this orc. Poor guy. Oh, he's coming in from downtown with the edge too. Well, uh, that player has block, is why we saw that. And that's another injury. And the depressed Santas scored. Uh, I I just feel terrible because I genuinely feel like I cursed the uh, 
I cursed the orcs at the start of this, saying, Oh, AG, or AV9's gonna mm. do wonders this game. We're not gonna break. Okay, now for the moment of truth, the stuns. Or the chaos, rather. Two of them stood up, but not the plus strength of work. Um, this is going to be tricky for the orcs. If they get some luckier removals, I think they can still score and tie it up. But, uh, it's going to be hard. If they do manage to, t manage to tie it up, uh, including those removals, then I think they will have a chance to win the game in overtime. But it is really all contingent on them, um, on them busting through the uh, apparently impenetrable Kislev armor. Or at least the Kislev ligaments and bones. Because really, the Kislev armor is broken. It's just, just been a stun every time. On the other hand, as SD has as FD has pointed out, uh AV9 is a fake skill. Yeah. I, I tend to face that reality a lot myself in the the main league and the elf league. Yet uh, I, I somehow still haven't gotten the best Oh, Kislev get another free reroll. Uh, that is a really shallow kick, which, um, I think the kids are probably fine with. Um, they're probably, I have to imagine they're okay with scoring relatively quickly. I, I wouldn't hate capitalizing on that immediately. Uh, immediately going for the dirty player orc, the most dangerous player on the team. Uh, and they KO'd him again. Well, you were not on the pitch long. Uh, Domographic. You were not awake long. He did his job once, that's all that matters. Hmm. You say that, but honestly, I think the orcs could really use him being on the pitch. Not, on not only for being a body, but he's potentially yeah. a very effective way for the orcs to remove Kislev. I mean, I, I agree with the bodies on the field kind of thing, but you you wouldn't want to be fouling once you're down so many players uh, at this point. Okay, so there's two things to keep in mind there. First of all, the orcs still have a bribe. Right, yeah. And uh, second of all, it's a this is very much a risk-reward scenario. The orcs are down. They have to take more risks in order... Okay, well, Kislev are memeing on their side of the pitch right now. Um, but they're out of reach of the orcs anyway. Uh, right. In the orc position, you have to take risks now. Otherwise, because you're behind. If you play it safe, you will stay behind. You have to take risks in order to try and get claw your way back into parity. And one of those risks is fouling. Uh, I agree, Metal. Oh. By the way... I, I, don't, I don't have the stream pulled up, okay. so... What... Um... Metal just mentioned that uh, Kislev are under no obligation to slow play. And, uh, yeah, uh, I, by the way, I will take this moment because as Metal uh, just sort of reminded me in his own way, um, since we're in a downturn anyway, there is a new, what is it called? Clip contest. You can submit one clip each week from different casters, and I'm a different caster. I don't cast very many games. So this is an excellent opportunity to some, to grab some excellent blood, well, some medium blood bowl play. 
Um, and Diversify send it that in. portfolio. Exactly. And the only other way you're going to get my dulcet tones immortalized is if you watch Dr. Hef. But I'm going to shill him another time. Well, then the first person who submits it uh, gets it. I believe those were the rules of Metal's contest. Okay, so the orcs are wrapping around and trying to put pressure on the ball, which I think makes a lot of sense here. Um... The Kislev will most likely pick up the ball on their next turn. Uh, it, would, it would be, well, yeah. It would be unlikely if it didn't. Probably with sure hands, that's a 1 in 9. 90% chance they pick up the ball. Oh. And then, uh, they don't really have too much option for wrapping around here. So they are going to most likely cage in the middle of all of these orcs. Which is sort of, I mean, like, the ball will be safe. At the end of the day, that's the important bet. But it will give the orcs a chance to put a lot more pressure on the ball. Which might be to their detriment, because it will give them the opportunity to make mistakes. But it will also give them the opportunity to, you know, put pressure on the ball. And maybe make a play happen. I do not love that blitz, to be honest. Um, like, I get it, because that was in case something goes wrong with the ball. That makes a lot of sense. But also, it is taking pressure off of the wrong place. Yeah, you still got that movement six guy, yes. Yes, that uh, is movement six. Yeah, that player is still standing, and also the orcs still have a, I mean, it's maybe a bit generous to call it a screen, but they have something resembling a screen, uh, sort of boxing in where the Kislev can go right now. Um, we also might see Slice and Dice just try and bit out the wizard. Metal, I think you know the answer to that question. <laughs> no one reads. I, I can personally attest to that. All I saw was Rebel, Twitch Cup, and thought, eh, it's probably for streamers only. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get involved because I don't stream. I mean, I read because I... Okay, there is the fireball. Uh, the fireball has managed to remove a player. And the ball carrier at that. Uh, but it's going to be hard for the orcs to retrieve the ball from that position. Um, we're definitely going to see a blitz on the, the baby line man right here. Uh, probably going to try and scatter the ball into a better position. Which has a... Let's call it a 5 in 8 chance. I'm, I'm not good at math. <laughs> I, I can't help out there. Okay, that counts. It is not it is not where you wanted it to scatter, but it is still better than where it was. Yeah, it's a light, at least not in tackle zones anymore. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, the stunned Kislev are actually doing work now because they are helping form a, well, again, calling it a cage is maybe a bit <laughs> wrong, but they're helping form a defensive line so that it'll be harder for Kislev to build, for the Kislev to build a counterattack. Like, at the very least, it's going to force some leaps. It's definitely warm bodies getting in the way. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Um, 
No. Okay. I don't agree with that. Um, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure about that either. You know what? Actually, with the ball carrier there, this dodge makes sense. But I still have no idea why the ball carrier is standing there. Okay, now, now the dodge makes sense. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, that dodge makes sense in the context of the ball carrier being where they are. But the ball carrier does not make sense to be where they are. Because, like, this is a 2 plus 2 die with strip ball. Oh yeah, that's a 2 plus 1. I, I completely forgot that was a skill. Or dodge. You don't actually need to leap here, although I suppose it doesn't make any difference. It actually would, because then the Mighty Blow guy is kind of preventing the block from happening. Oh, wait, nope, leaps regardless. Okay, it's another stun. Uh, that ball is going to bounce around a bit. Good scatter for the Kislev. Okay, and they just picked it up. I guess that makes sense. I have to imagine that we are going to see the orcs try and dodge, do a 3 plus dodge for a 1 die here. Uh, which would be what that play is meant to pre prevent. Well, this is certainly interesting. Uh, but that whole sequence was certainly interesting. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if he can have a chain push play going if he moves like the tackle guy. Oh. Uh, I don't think we're going to see any chain push. In there, but... I don't think. The chain push was doable anyway. It definitely it, would have like, required a lot of. Dice, it, it was but... a neat idea. It could have almost happened, but it would have required more orc dodging. Oh. 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 There was a. I didn't see that. And there you know was an what? entirely different chain push. And you know, this is why I am in the casting seat of the medium ball. Mighty Blow Guy finally earning his paycheck somehow. Because I'm a medium caster, not a medium coach. <laughs> okay, um, so that is a mark on the ball, but it's an Agi 4 ball carrier, and it's a red die block. Um, I think you... Okay, this makes sense to me. This is a risky play. I think the orcs needed to try and take the two die here. And I don't think that player was doing any good, m much good for the team, if they just stood where they were. Oh, well, that's a good start to the turn. Okay, um, Kislev have cleaned off the ball. I don't think they have quite enough players free to cage up properly, but they're close. And, uh, orcs aren't very fast. At the very least, the orcs are going to need to do some iffy dodging if they want to hit the ball carrier. Oh, 
I was trying to see if the movement guy off to the far left, I believe it is, depending on which side you're viewing. Oh no. And there's another no, KO. But uh, what I was saying is, like, I was trying to check if Billy O'Nair could uh, do some kind of cheeky one dice with a bunch of GFIs, but nah, he's one super short. Okay, the orcs are presently at a two player disadvantage. Um, I'd say I would call this ball fairly secure. Um, the only way that the ball is going to be marked, um, well, no, it could be marked without dodging, but it certainly cannot be blitzed without at least one four plus dodge. Let's see. Actually, the best blitz would be a 5 plus dodge. 4 plus. 5 plus is better than 4 plus 3 plus. Uh, that does not feel good, though. I don't think we'll see be seeing that, frankly. That's what I'd suggest is, like, that's basically. Moving okay, um. I think that was pushing in the wrong direction. Like, I think this blitz actually made sense. I don't think this is a bad, bad blitz. I do think you should have pushed the carrier, or the Kislev down. As it would have made it easier to mark the ball carrier. To you considering the reroll? Um, I honestly I don't know whether I would reroll here. It looks like Static has decided against it. I wouldn't hate it if he did personally. I wouldn't mind the reroll on the second dodge. I think the first one was pretty iffy. I mean, like I. I like the dodge here, actually, to be clear. I think re-rolling on the first dodge was iffy. Let's see... Yeah, that makes sense. Well, uh, I mean, there is still a one pretty easy one die blitz here. Three plus, two plus. Of course. The question then would be. Oh, oh no, go ahead. The, the question then would be how are the orcs going to recover? Um. That is a problem for someone who has recovered the ball. Or rather, knocked loose the ball. That makes it much trickier. Now the best one is 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. Which, like, honestly, I think you still take as the orcs, probably. I don't really see a better blitz here. Maybe the wrestle uh, pro guy. But if you, if you do that, then Kislev just scores. Like, they don't actually need to stall it out here. They'll be up to 2-0 to zero with only 3 turns left in the drive. Yeah, at this point I think you should just throw a cube to see what lands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, no. Okay, uh, that does at least allow the, the orcs to mark the ball carrier. But I don't love it. I mean, 
I don't love any of the orcs options though, like to be clear. This is choose this is choosing between several bad options. Uh that's rough. You I you have to reroll that now because Kislev are gonna just score. I think this player should be marking the other Adji 4 Kislev. I think that's probably what will happen here. Would you take the 2 plus to stand in front of him or stand onto the corner of him as the thing? Uh, well, apparently you would do that. I don't hate that. I like that even. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't hate that either. Mm gives both of them a hard time. Like, at the end of the day here, it's a 2 plus for Kiss of the Score. So, you need to create... The Orcs could not make it not a 2 plus. So, you need to create obstacles that are easier to clear than a 2 plus. Because that might happen. Barnaby was hoping for a quad skull there. I mean, the Quad Skull would have been made a much, much more interesting turn of events. Yeah, because then the orcs would start have to start hoofing it down the pitch. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't blame the kids live for like scoring early instead of stalling out the rest of the game. Uh, I, I think they could have done that two turns ago. I mean, literally they couldn't. They weren't far enough down the pitch. But I think they would have, could have safely scored two turns ago. And they would have been fine. In terms of a game position point of view. Uh, so, all the orcs stood up again, except for the plus strength one. Again. Kisla, okay. Well, I mean, that's a little bit rude, but okay. I get it. I understand it. The orcs cannot score twice in three turns. Maybe if they get a riot, but... Then, actually, it wouldn't be the first time. The riot could always happen. Um... I mean, like, orcs are gonna beat the crap out of the linemen. And then probably try and hoof it down the pitch. Yeah, that's that sounds right. FD. That is that is the optimal sequence of kickoff events for the orcs. Okay, well, they have a ball retriever. They're probably going to need to throw the ball. Uh, that's... That's something they need to deal with. Honestly, I think... Yeah, I think these players should all be on the line of scrimmage. Except maybe the fouling guy, because you know what? You know what? You want... You want a fouler. Okay, that is not... That is not a riot. Right side that at least makes um, the orc easier. If they score in two turns, it's still possible for them to get by with a blitz. Uh, I don't like this either. They should be running down the pitch with the movement six player. It'll be easier to score with him than most. He should not be taking a block. This feels like Sadakit has... I mean, 
looking at the positioning, I think Staticus is going to try to score. At the very least. Well, that's two stuns. Okay, that that's setting up for a foul. Okay, Staticus has given up. That's a little disappointing, but I suppose understandable. As it turns out, it is a bad idea to foul if this is a bad idea. Feels like that player is invincible at this point. A little bit. Okay, well, uh, while we're playing out the final turns of this game, like, any any closing thoughts here? I wouldn't mind seeing a vanity pass from the orcs. Oh, because not, just... not the best closing... Not, not the best closing thought. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... Let's... If, if I'm gonna be honest, there's not really much to say about this match aside from best of luck next season to the orcs because they they really got hammered this match i won't lie i'm not gonna sugarcoat it yeah i think okay so i feel like slice and dice played this game a little bit better than staticus i feel like had their dice been the same we would have had a much closer match in which slice and dice still came out ahead Oh no, I'm I'm not ragging on either of their but, scores. Slice and Dice definitely made Yeah, up. like I, I feel like Slice and Dice earned this victory, but also I don't think no I think Well, the injury dice speak for themselves to some extent. Yeah, the early orc removals were definitely a bit They they stung quite a bit, I, I won't lie. Mm-hmm. And when one of the best pieces, that being the strength four guy, is on the bench the whole time taking a quick nap, yeah, for three it also hurts a bit more. Yep, on the bench for three quarters of the game. Okay, um, and Slice and Dice is not going to give up the score easily either. They are building a screen. For a second, he had me thinking that uh, he was making a little pathway. Just, just like a, here you go, sorry about the game kind of thing. So, if you were the orcs, which which way would you go for your attempting your t single touchdown? Going through the tackle and edge two guy. Personally, because that's a four plus into a three plus, I believe, as opposed to all the other options. I think all of the options are a 4 plus into a 3 plus, to be honest. I mean, I'm looking at you either hand off to the block guy and do the dodges, or you just, like, gun it straight through everybody, which isn't the best idea. This, of course, implying that no blitz is taken. Uh, bliss is taken. 
Okay, we have our route. All picked up. Actually, that is clearly the best route right there. Um, yeah. Can't believe I didn't see that one, honestly. And Orc GFIs did not fail. No tripwires on this pitch. Well, we gotta see the we gotta see this true stars of the game just once. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the Orc cheerleaders. Everybody's favorite. Ah, uh, MVP, MVP, very well deserved. And we have our uh, medium bull champion. Um. So, that was the playoff. I, I don't have any plans to talk to the champion. <laughs> Go do it yourself. He's in the forum, probably. Um, again, you get what you pay for. Uh, until next time, though. Until the next time a medium-rated <laughs> caster is needed, I've been Cast Blue. And I've been Generic Gamer with a... Probably less than medium performance. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat that either. Ah, uh, you've been fine. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to congratulate the winner and offer condolences to the not winner. Bye! And, but wait, before we sign off, uh, I think linemen signups are still going? Or maybe they ended once this game did? I, I would double check with the guys running the show. I have no idea. That I, I might as well advertise the league. Probably, yeah. probably a good call. I have no idea about that stuff. No one told me to do that, so I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it because I'm I'm showing up for my third season. So sounds good. Signups are closed. We just heard it here live. Uh, but we can add right. people to the reserve list, and by we, I mean you. Okay. Bye. I mean, I